Good morning, folks. It's March 27th, 2018, and while the March for Please Take Our Guns was going on, the Free Thought Project brought us this story, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. Court reveals Orlando Shooter's father worked for FBI, allowing his son to carry out massacre. In a bombshell revelation, court documents revealed that the father of the Orlando Shooter, Omar Mateen, worked for the FBI and got his son out of an indictment that would have prevented the shooting. And, you know, I think it's these kind of stories, the FBI and their assets that I cover, that they will not let my channel grow. But you know what? I'm going to keep bringing it. Because the FBI, you're full of shit. Orlando, Florida. Headlines across the Internet today are focusing on the March for Our Lives movement that took place over the weekend in which hundreds of thousands of kids and adults begged the government to disarm them to ostensibly prevent mass shootings. As the government moves in to boost the police state, a quiet headline out of Florida revealed that the father of the Pulse gunman was actually part of that police state and may have known of his son's plans to attack the nightclub. Attorneys for Nora Solomon are calling for a mistrial after they say new details from prosecutors reveal that Pulse gunman Omar Mateen's father was an FBI source and is currently under a criminal investigation. This according to a scathing report from ClickOrlando.com. Sadiq Mateen, Omar Mateen's father, was an FBI informant for 11 years, according to a motion filed by the defense. From 2005 until June of 2016, when his son murdered 53 people in an Orlando nightclub, Sadiq had an intimate relationship with the FBI. His position within the FBI appears to be the apparent impetus behind the controversial cover-ups and even the reason for Omar Mateen to have legally purchased the firearm he used in the massacre, in spite of setting off multiple red flags. Where else have we heard that? Texas anyone? Florida anyone? You see, once again, the FBI does not drop the ball. The FBI puts the ball in play. The defense claims that to protect their asset, Sadiq Mateen, they are attempting to pin charges on Omar's wife. According to the motion, the defense states that the decision not to give North Solomon a polygraph was possibly based on the FBI's desire to implicate North Solomon rather than Sadiq Mateen in order to avoid scrutiny of its own ineptitude with the latter. What's more, according to the defense, Sadiq's role within the FBI also stopped an indictment against Omar in 2013, which could have put him in jail and prevented the massacre because he was threatening his co-workers. Mateen's father played a significant role in the FBI's decision not to seek an indictment from the Justice Department for false statements to the FBI or obstruction of justice against Omar Mateen during his 2013 investigation into his alleged threats. According to the defense, Sadiq is currently under investigation for money transfers to Turkey and Pakistan after documents were found at his home on the day of the Pulse attack. The government email to Solomon's attorneys also states that in 2012, an anonymous tip indicated that Sadiq Mateen was seeking to raise 50 to 100,000 via a donation drive to contribute toward an attack against the government of Pakistan. In spite of being under investigation for plotting international acts of terror, Sadiq was campaigning for then Democratic president, presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. The FBI asset who was under investigation for plotting acts of war, who kept his son out of jail for threatening to kill people, which allowed a mass shooting to happen, appeared in photos with Clinton positioned directly behind her during her speech. What went into your decision about going to this event right near Orlando, where this Pulse nightclub shooting happened, Mateen was asked at the event. He then replied with a bizarre answer that had nothing to do with the question. I wish my son joined the army and fought ISIS and destroyed ISIS. That would be much better. But that is not all. Sadiq Mateen was also a regular visitor to the White House, and there are photos from his own Facebook page to prove it. Only two months before his son, who he knew threatened to kill people, 
would carry out the deadly attack in Orlando, Sadiq Mateen was shaking hands with political leaders in D.C. And here he is. He went to, he visited Congress, he visited the State Department, and he met with political leaders. Why does he have this kind of access? Oh, that's right, because he's an FBI asset. It gets worse. As TFTP reported at the time, the FBI was also tipped off by a gun store owner about Omar's attempt to purchase body armor and a large amount of ammo. Nothing happened. Once again, nothing happened. They don't drop the ball. They put it in play. Same exact scenario that went, that went down in, in Texas, that went down in Florida. Since the beginning, the FBI has been covering up what really happened in Orlando, and it appears that we now know why. They are protecting their asset. As TFTP reported, this protection started at the beginning. A letter from the FBI dated June 20th, 2016, attached to a lawsuit brought by the city of Orlando seeking the release of 9-11 calls in full, as well as other records pertaining to the shooting had also been forwarded to the Seminole County Sheriff's Office, but included instructions for law enforcement to deny all requests for information. The letter directed law enforcement agencies to deny information to anyone asking and immediately notify the FBI of any requests your agency received so the FBI can seek to prevent disclosure through appropriate channels as necessary. It now seems that Nora Solomon is going to take the fall for her abusive husband's bloody rampage, despite being unethically coerced and likely innocent. And all of, his, all of it is due to the FBI's attempt to cover for the real accomplice their own asset. I'll leave you with that. Be well. Be safe.